Good morning. It is Saturday, the 20th of April, 2013, but by the time this is released, it'll be the 21st, so I'm greeting you from the past. This is Time to Live podcast with Quad and Rev, my partner Quad. Hello, how are you doing today? Doing all right, and I'm Rev. Uh, This is our gaming podcast where we discuss just about anything that goes involved with games and, and things of that nature. Yep, so... Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> um, so, random random bit of entertainment, or, or rather misunderstanding. So there was a conversation at work yesterday, and this is kind of off topic, but it deals with the date. Uh, two of my associates were talking about their plans for this Saturday and how it was a celebration and they were going to go out to clubs or whatever, and people were giving out gift bags. And it absolutely boggled my mind that two people uh, in this modern day and age, and and as intelligent as they were, would be celebrating Hitler's birthday. And then one of them pointed out that they were both potheads and they were talking about 420, which only exists in America, apparently. (laughs) Okay... I just a random. Like, I was not altogether there in the head, but it confused me beyond all belief. Nothing to do with games. Wow. Yeah. Well, this uh, this is this is quite interesting that you mentioned this because uh, on the internet, whatever discussion or whatever topic or whatever thing, eventually everything will revert to talking about Nazis or Hitler. Godwin's law. Pretty much. Yeah. So you just broke it. Uh, our first first instance. Yeah, yeah. It's probably going to happen again, but uh, whatever. <laughs> Especially if we start talking about World War II games. For some reason, the Nazis are really big in World War II. Well, yeah. They had quite a central role in it. Why don't they, Why don't they... give us the Japanese more? You know, like sending a nuke to Hiroshima and um, Okinawa. <laughs> that would be a kind of short game. You pilot flat for a while, drop bomb, credits roll. Yeah, that would be awesome. Can I have that game? <laughs> uh, would have had to be a cinematic game, though. That would be fun. <laughs> yeah. something. Like, I, I I bet you they could do it something like uh, um, uh, Walking Dead. Yeah. Like a twist on the uh, radiation thing, making a zombie apocalypse or something like that. That would be fun. Yeah, do it as a prequel or something. I I, I could see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, have you been playing anything this week? Um, I have been playing. Let's calm down, angry customers, for most of the week. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, just some minor fallout from my project. Uh, my goal was to get my first real night of sleep on uh, Wednesday. Unfortunately, that did not happen. And uh, I'm still kind of dealing with some fallout from the project of that. And I kind of made a big boo-boo during that project. Um, we were uh, When we budgeted it out, apparently, I had misunderstood the way that Citrix does their licensing according to their documentation you purchase a license and you put it on your management server and then all the other servers in your cluster are managed underneath that that was what i took reading through all of that Uh, what it actually is is that uh, all all of your servers need to have a license so i kind of only purchased one third of the license that we needed so i'm working to rectify that this week Mm hmm Yeah, but uh, in actual gaming, I uh, am just finishing up Batman Arkham City. Uh, I'm trying to complete the entire game, including all of the Riddler challenges and all of the... uh, And I'm most of the way done. I just have the combat challenges and the Catwoman uh, trophies to collect. Okay. Um, But uh, yeah, other than that, and that's only been like an hour or so each night, as I'm uh, getting ready for bed. But, yeah, the, I haven't really had time to, to game the last couple of weeks, which makes me feel bad. Yeah, and you're not going to like my playlist this week. <laughs> uh, business Trip and Dota 2. And Cataclysm DDA, actually. That's right, that's right. I haven't had, a time, had, haven't had time to watch that uh, the video you released already. 
I've actually released three, and I've got another nine finished. Oh, well done. Mr. Yeah. Productive. Yeah, I actually recorded like three, three and a half hours yesterday. That was fun. So I have a lot of content to release, you know, the next week and some the week after. I may just release two or three of them at once and see how that goes. But I'm really enjoying the game and actually doing sort of a let's play thing about it because then I actually have a goal of surviving because before I was just pretty much going on a rampage trying to kill as many zombies and monsters as I could. But now I'm just trying to get a character that survives, learns how to do everything in in the world, like it needs to learn how to drive, uh, it needs to learn how to survive, how to cook food, how to do mechanics, and a lot of skills. I think there are like 20, 25, maybe 30 skills there that need to be leveled up for him to be the ultimate survivor. So and, that's going to be fun. How how are you doing on that? Well, I've got a few fails, but I've got one now that I've uh, maybe recorded like one or one and a half hour of, and it's still alive, so it's looking good. I'm being a bit more cautious with that. Taking yeah. less risks? Yes, because uh, the previous ones I've, I've done, I take some really stupid risks and die because of those risks. <sighs> <laughs> It's a very hard game. It's not really forgiving, so you need to watch out for that. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I will. Uh, I will watch the videos that you've already released, and to our audience, I would recommend that you do as well. Um, but uh, let's uh, follow follow up to uh, to yet another. Uh, as you recall, uh, we talked recently about the. Uh, paralyzed Diablo 3 streamer and you couldn't see it because we're doing this over audio but I was doing air quotes around paralyzed because apparently he's not yeah. and uh, Twitch TV announced that they have banned him and his channel so apparently they don't like having their name attached to uh, malicious people yeah and he also had a sort of a subscriber thing on his channel you know the uh Twitch partners have subscriptions to their channels so you don't get ads and so on. And you also support the uh, content creator or whatever. And, well, they kind of stopped the last payment and refunded the subscription to oh, the people. Oh, well, that's that good for them. It. Yeah, well, when they ban someone, they stop the, his service and you can't watch his stuff anymore. So they have to refund but I think they stopped at least his payment of it. So, yeah. Well, good also, for them. Good I also them. watched the video, and it's pretty clear he's not paralyzed. <laughs> See, and that's that's what I thought as well. It was like, his story just didn't add up based on what we had seen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, topics for today. Uh, I have something that's actually kind of interesting, something that is uh, kind of sad, but also has some good bearing on what can happen in the future. And, oh, I forgot uh, the Let's Play feature. Uh, mind if I go? Yep, go. Yep. All right, uh, this week I would like to feature Blackbeard. Um, he's a really cool cat from South America. Uh, he goes by Lehan Black, that's L E H A N B L A C K on YouTube, and he's Lehan Beard on Reddit. Uh, he is high energy, puts a lot of work into his Let's Plays. Um, just a fantastic all around guy. Super helpful, super, super nice. His accent is beyond adorable. Uh, the, uh, I, the, the one that we'd kind of tease him about is, is Phantom Horror Glass. Uh, and I can't do it justice because I can't do his accent, but trust me, it, it, it's definitely entertaining. Hmm, good. Have you, have you seen anything of his? I've seen some of the stuff, but I I just don't have time to go and watch Let's Plays. Well, long ones, at least. Uh, it no. just takes too much of my time, and I'm going to play Dota 2 and play and record and all that. It's so much fun. I, I've actually started uh, I've started watching some Let's Plays as I fall asleep. I'll, I'll throw on a playlist and maybe get an episode or two out as I'm falling asleep, and that's the hmm. only way that I 
can even come close to staying current. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, so do go check out Liam Black or Blackbeard. He, is, he actually has some great content, at least from things that I watched like two or three months ago. <laughs> well, it's I, I definitely, if, if for no other reason, if, if to, to any of our listeners, if you haven't checked him out before, check out his Ocarina of Time blind. I, I know it's a rare thing to find a gamer that hasn't played Ocarina of Time, uh, but but going on the journey with him as he's exploring it and seeing the seeing the ways that that he's trying new things in his videos to to keep it lively and 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 have it make sense we're, it, it's really entertaining i highly highly recommend that yep it is quite good and i've also actually decided to pick one uh, i was looking i've been watching some of his stuff and he is actually quite good he puts an extreme amount of work into his Let's Plays, he does um, quite a bit of editing, let's just say that. He doesn't release all that much, he only releases like once a week, so it's not too hard to actually catch up on his stuff, but yeah, the the things he does release is usually quality content. And the person I'm talking about is a Silver Age Scientist. Ah, good old sassy. Yep, sass. And yeah, he's... He, 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 his... Let's Plays are just really good. They, They're very entertaining. Yeah, but yeah, I, I can just say I, I haven't watched too much of it because I don't enjoy too much, you know, watching heavily edited content. I like to watch some unedited, a lot of unedited stuff, but, you know, doing the editing that needs to be done and so on. Uh, but yeah, I have a hard time paying attention to that, but he does an amazing job of everything he does, and he really needs the attention. Well, he doesn't really need it, because he's uh, way bigger than me. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, yeah. uh, no, I would I would definitely agree. His uh, his Half-Life 2, uh, his abridged series, uh, so far he's doing uh, Skyrim and Half-Life 2. Absolutely he finished Skyrim, fantastic. actually. Oh, did he just finish it? Yeah, it's like a month ago, maybe? I haven't watched month- it, but... Yeah. Wow, apparently I'm really out of it. <laughs> yeah, you are. But uh yeah, no, highly recommend as well. I I would I would definitely agree with that. Check out check out Silver Age Scientist or uh as we know him in the IRC, SAS. Yeah. Remember, Silver Age Scientist. It's very simple. Okay. <laughs> so, let us move on to the news. Yeah, we can we could definitely do that. Do you have any news on your side? Yeah, well, I only have like one thing I'd like to do is discuss a bit. So, have you heard of Peter Molyneux's Curiosity? Uh, I know of Peter Molyneux. I do not know of of Curiosity. So, Curiosity, it's sort of a uh, I don't know. Is it only an I think it's iPad and Android and all those things. It's a sort of a cube where you click and go through sort of layers. Uh, and you pick, when you go through one layer, you get another picture. So the end goal, well, I could just say before I go towards telling what the end goal is, uh, it's sort of a online thing. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are like um, in the beginning there were at least like a hundred to two hundred thousand people clicking on the cube at once. So you can see people sitting there. Well, not really sitting there, but you can see people clicking away on the cube and clearing out the layers. And this can easily take a day for two hundred thousand people to do. Uh, but you know, not everyone does like a thousand clicks a day to do it. Uh, but the end goal is to get to the innermost layer, and uh, it was supposed to—it's supposed to be something that is life-changing. That the last layer is—I don't know what it is. No one knows what it is. Uh, I think it's Peter Molyneux and one other guy, like, uh, another programmer, that actually knows what it is. So that's going to be quite interesting. But the thing is about the thing I want to talk about here is that. 
uh, it's losing sort of interest. People are losing. Interest what, what do you mean by losing interest? Well, it's been running since November, so <laughs> clicking on a cube for people to do every day can be a bit tedious after a while. And there are a lot of layers, a lot. Uh, th they said they were going to add or take away layers depending on the interest of it and how fast people can actually remove the layers. And so far it looks like they are going to remove a bit of those layers and well they'll probably try to bring it to an end within you know half a year or something so yeah oh oh 60 layers yeah <laughs> my brain just caught up with what you were what you were talking about i i was reading about uh something that he's he's doing with that um that he's basically doing monetized online trolling oh yeah yeah, apparently he just recently announced that users can pay money to reverse the progress made by others in the game. Ah, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, I didn't really read that. Like, Curious Curiosity owners can now pay to add or remove blocks of 10,000, 100,000, 500,000 cubelets. The effect is not instantaneous, however, and will instead take place when the game heads to its next layer. Okay, and the prices for those uh, come... Well, it's not... Uh, it's a dollar, seven dollars, and eleven dollars. Yes, yes. It is. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's sort of a form of internet trolling. Uh, but, yeah, do check out Curiosity, and try to pay attention to whatever is inside the cube whenever it gets there. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll have to. I'll have to add that to my keep an eye out. Yeah, I'm keeping an eye out on it, and I'm sure there'll be some articles on it on different game sites. But yeah, also the reason one of the reason I came to it is because I wanted to discuss Goddess. Have you heard of it? Uh, no. You haven't. Okay. So this is apparently a uh, god game, and what you do is, it's sort of a Populous, and I don't remember what the other game type was, but you've probably heard of Populous. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so he's trying to just sort of remake a game like that, and, well, it, it's creation, you have to manage your people, and it's, yeah, sort of like black and white and Populous with some dungeon keeper in it and so on. So it's going to be quite interesting. But yeah, the, apparently the development on this has gone quite far. And they are looking towards, well, hopefully finishing it and getting it out to us because we are waiting for it. Whatever, pretty much whatever Peter Molyneux makes is gold. <laughs> Even if he does over-promise and under-deliver, I will agree with that. Yes, he does have an amazing amount of good... Uh, well, his portfolio is amazingly good on game. And, well, yeah, Goddess, a game you should really look out for. Pay attention to it. I've, I even backed it on Kickstarter. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. Okay, I will. I will. Yeah, oh yeah, there's one more thing about it. They, I'm going to try and get it so that you can integrate it with like Facebook and Twitter so that you can have people, your friends there, uh, be the citizens in Goddess. So you'll, you're, you'll actually be able to... Uh, well, <laughs> yeah. Play it via Twitter? No, 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 not like that. You'll, you'll have a client like everything else. But the thing is, um, when you like, let's say you have a world and uh, a city or something, uh, and you have it integrated up to Facebook and Twitter, uh, you'll start seeing people, sort of, uh, the people in the game being named after your friends and having specific uh, personalities to them that are very close to your friends. And that's going to be an interesting way because if you, like, let's say, I just watched an interview where an example came up, where and uh, they talked about like if you could see your boss popping up in there, like the name of your boss and his personality and all that, 
and you based can decide... on his, based on his social media postings. Yes, pretty much. And he uh, like you can give him like the biggest house you want, or you can start punishing him, and killing him, and all that. Hmm. <sighs> Think of the uh, rage outlets you can have in that game by killing off your friends and relatives, or just giving them good houses to feel good. <laughs> that, that would be that would be interesting. I, I it it, it kind of sucks, but it leads into one of the one of the things that I was was going to be discussing today but uh I, it it makes me wonder about the legality of that actually like like if i if i'm playing this and you know i i have uh, you're not forced to do it oh okay well then never mind <laughs> yeah. you're not forced to do it you can do it i mentioned that <laughs> But it, it would be an interesting. It, I I I think that could open up some some seriously interesting legal discussions on it. Uh, you know, does it, it say say a man and a woman are are planning on getting a divorce, and um, you know, he uses the fact that she has a character in this game that's based on him off of his Facebook, and she just beats the shit out of him in the game. Like like, would that be? Could that be considered, you know, evidence as to mentality or things of that? That that could raise some very interesting le legal questions, I think. Yeah. Well, they'll get to us whenever that comes to that. <laughs> <sighs> so yeah, that was pretty much what I wanted to discuss today. So what's up next? Uh, well, I I I want to get the big and heavy one out of the way first. Uh, the it it's. I don't want to make it seem as though we're trying to cash in on a tragedy, but uh, I, I don't know if you follow U.S. or, or even um, some international news, but did you hear about what happened in Boston just the other day? Yes, I did. Okay. Well, I, I, I made a bet with a coworker when that when we were first finding out about it that uh, they would somehow uh, miraculously link the uh the fact that these were teenage one of them was a teenage boy that would play video games to this despite the fact that nobody anywhere ever made mention of the fact that he was a gamer or anything like that i have seen in with my own eyes a news article discussing the fact that he played violent video games and that obviously led to this and it drives <sighs> me crazy Maybe. Why? There have been several studies involving video game violence and the effect on the mentality of children and teenagers and adults and it's shown time and time again that it doesn't affect people. Exactly. And, so why and, the hell do the media still do this? I have no uh, idea. I think it's ratings. I really, I'm, I'm convinced that that is the only reason they do it, and it's because gaming needs a, is is an acceptable at the moment scapegoat. Yeah. Well, the thing is, when they when the media does this, they kind of make the um, the people sort of look like anti-heroes or a sort of infamous people that are the worst people in the world and they can do that and run it and they can keep running it until they've been incarcerated, executed, killed or whatever. So they can just keep a story running and in like half a year everyone will have forgotten about it and they will have made it a lot of money during the campaign and it has accomplished absolutely nothing. Well, and I think there's there's even deeper implications. I, I, humans have been violent creatures for as long as there have been humans. Uh, it, it's just a fact of nature. You have to kill to survive. In, in modern day and age, our need to kill uh, other conscious beings is slightly less. But I do think in large part, I mean... The, the the crusades uh, the the crusaders didn't play video games and that was her the spanish inquisition didn't play video games and that was pretty damn horrific so yeah I, and i'm pretty sure that hitler didn't <laughs> play violent video games 
two Godwin's Law invocations in one podcast. Beat that. <laughs> yep. Wow. But yeah, I mean, in all of the horrible atrocities that there have been across the world, how many of them legitimately could you say, oh, well, so-and-so played video games? And that means they're obviously... It, it drives me crazy. Absolutely. Especially since, and studies have also shown this, since the, you know, the the mid-70s, early 80s, you know, back when video games were actually getting popular, uh, violent crime has decreased dramatically. Yeah. So if anything, video games stop crime, not cause crime. I, <sighs> boggles my mind. Absolutely um, boggles my mind. I'm pretty sure that when, you know, movies started getting a lot of violence in them that that was discussed uh, in great detail about whether or not it will affect people's minds and movies and books and video games aren't actually all that different they I, they're just I, I would different types say of that, media that, yeah different types of media but i would actually go so far as to say that books are more uh inherently capable of driving somebody towards something than a video game because just whether or not we we agree on the fact that video games are art and a lot of people don't agree i personally think they do uh there there is still a very inherent this is for enjoyment purposes only aspect to gaming that i think play helps keep that separated out yeah, well, I do agree that video game is an art form. Books are looked on as art, even, you know, uh, I don't know about movies, whether or not they're sort of art, but there are some movies I, I that think can be they sent. can be artistic, yeah. Yeah, so why can't video games be that? Why can't I, they just honestly, accept that it is? I, be, because I think in large part the prevailing mentality is that, as I said, the, that inherent, this is for entertainment purposes only. I mean, there's there's books and movies, you know, that documentaries are a good example where, you know, it's something that is basically a movie, but for educational purposes. Books, there are textbooks and there are autobiographies and and you know, discourses on human nature, et cetera, et cetera. And I, I think you can, people can justify setting those as being uh, slightly different, being able to take an existing medium and say, and, and using that for another purpose. And we're only just starting to get into that aspect of video games with uh, gamification of education and things of that nature. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I do so agree. I, I think in a I think in a couple of years, uh, you know, ten ten or so years at the outside, we we will definitely see a change in the um, public awareness of the artistic nature of video games. Yeah, and I've also seen you know lately <clears throat> now that um, mobile gaming and all that has become more central to people's lives that the discussion on whether or not it's video, uh, violent video games has actually gone down. Uh, I know from the bombing on 22nd of July here in Norway in 2011 that uh, video games were mentioned, but he was a avid World of Warcraft player. That was mentioned oh. a lot. And, but he also played Call of Duty. So they mentioned that, but I think it was pretty much shut down. There wasn't much mention for it. So I think maybe some nations are more enlightened than others. I, I am than jealous the US. of you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so. I, it, here in here here in the U.S., there was a there was recently a uh, a, a younger woman that was running for uh, some political office in one of the states. Oh yeah, and yeah I her read opponent that. Yeah, her opponents use the fact that she played a rogue in World of Warcraft as one of those, you know, mudslinging things where it's like, oh, she plays a shifty thief in a video game, so obviously she's got no morals, blah, blah. <laughs> Horrendous. I would love for 
all countries to be enlightened enough to say, look, what people do for entertainment that doesn't actually harm anyone or anything else is just for entertainment's sake. Yeah. And we can actually see now that, you know, there are a lot of celebrities that play games, uh, although not many people actually know that. But... <sighs> well, there, it, it's gaining in popularity. I, I think one of the first ones that I remember hearing about was uh, was Mark Vincent. Yeah, I think, like, well, I'm, I'm a lot young, younger than you. So, <laughs> well, well uh, you, you would probably recognize him maybe by his stage name of Vin Diesel. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, See he's been playing. He's been yeah, playing that's, D&D that's for the ex- years. That's exactly the person I was thinking of. He was the first guy I also heard of. Yeah, I mean, he he played D and D for years, so much so that he has a he has a tattoo of his D and D character Riddick. Malcol. Was it that? I thought it Malcol. was Riddick. Oh, okay. M- not Riddick, Malcol. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm pretty sure it's Malcol, isn't it? <laughs> we'll we'll find out for next week. <laughs> But, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, he, he, he went out and started a video game studio. And the games that he's released, uh, you know, I, I, I personally thoroughly enjoy the, uh, the, the Riddick games. Escape from Butcher Bay and uh, Assault on Dark Athena. In fact, after this, having now mentioned it, I'm going to go back and finish Assault on Dark Athena before I move on to something else. But it's uh, It was, okay. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it, it, it's it's not like there aren't successful, wildly successful people out there that, you know, only losers or blah blah. You know, it, there are people that are absolutely great at what they do, that or at least successful at what they do that that play video games. Yep. Yeah. And and uh, to completely ignore that and and say, oh well, you know, it's just video game. Nah. I, I have issue with it. Yeah, I agree. So, uh, so that was that was the big and heavy and slightly into the politic, but uh, yeah. So, what's the next one? All right. Well, next, let let, let me ask you. Over in Norway, uh, here here in the United States, we have the uh, the Boy Scouts of America uh, and the the Girl Scouts. Do you do you guys have something similar? Do you use the uh, the 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 Boy Scouts program there? Uh, not as far as I know. There may be some down south, but I I don't know. There haven't really been any like that. We like in the area I live in, we sort of are nature people on our own. We like as I did. I mention that I'm part of the Sami indigenous people. I think I did. Um, and, well, most young people that are Sami start using knives when they're, like, three years old. So, yeah, we we are used to being out in the woods. We know how to survive and so on and so on. So we don't so really the, need to have a boy So the Boy Scout program would be kind of useless for you. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Well, interesting. Okay. Well, the reason the reason I asked was was because uh, both the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts have modified some of their uh, merit badges to include video games. Oh, yeah, uh, I and the, the the Girl Scout one is the one I'd rather focus. I I don't really support the Boy Scouts for for personal political reasons, but uh, the, I, I will mention that what they do on it. But but the Girl Scout uh, started a video game. Uh, what, what did they term it as? Mm, I don't know. I'm I'm trying to find it here. Uh, game developer yeah. ba- merit badge. Yeah. Uh, it, it was it was a collaboration between the Girl Scouts of the Greater Los Angeles area and a group an organization called Women in Games International. Uh, they. They designed it to bring about uh, more interest with fe- in in young girls into uh, STEM locations, STEM education, which is for those that aren't aware, STEM is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they they introduced the the game developer merit badge to try and get these girls interested in things that 
you know, in a fun way that, that apply uh, into that. Because uh, STEM is a good good thing for everybody to, to be involved in. But it is, unfortunately, I don't know if it's sexism or, or anything like that, but women tend to be woefully underrepresented in, in STEM environments. Hmm. Well, I don't know. The, the, I don't really... I think it's maybe if, i don't know it seems that men have more interest in games than women do uh i'm sure it's something genetic or something but yeah <laughs> you know uh, i could i could almost buy that if it wasn't for the fact that as we're sitting here recording this my wife is sitting on the floor in front of me playing minecraft on the xbox 360 mhm well i can still say i'm pretty sure that uh well as far as we can see, the men are the ones that currently play games, and uh, there was is sort it the, of a is culture it... in like ten, fifteen years ago where if a woman played games, it was sort of shunned, wasn't it? You know, I I honestly don't know. It it, it doesn't strike me as being all that plausible, just for the fact being that I know too many I know too many girls that game, too many women that game. Oh yeah, I do too. So that's a problem there. I mean, my 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 wife is she's like, remember, I'm the one that got you into World of Warcraft. So <laughs> you know, it, it it it's I I think they may be I think that women may be less vocal about their gaming habits, but and some of that I think is societal. But uh, I I I don't think I could go as far as saying it's genetic. Well, it may be, for all I know, but who knows? Who cares? <laughs> we, we just know people can play games if they want to, and I won't really look down upon them for playing games. I'm an avid gamer myself, so I really can't do it. The height of hypocrisy, definitely. Yeah, my sister but, uh... play, plays games, so that's no... <sighs> what, what kind of games does your sister like to play? Oh, uh, she has sort of a weird way. She, she plays whatever games I tell her that are good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, she she has some. Like, she play, for example, she still plays CS and sort of those types of games, shooter games, and so on. So. So yeah. the 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 me in me is wanting to know uh, when when she plays games. It, that you say are good, have you ever used that power for evil? Like, troll her with it? No. I'm a very nice no. person. I would say I'm a really nice person. That didn't stop me from trolling my husband. Well, I don't... When it comes to gaming, I want to keep a good sort of um, reputation when it comes to actually telling people what games are good. Ah, fair enough. I can, I could, I could believe that. See, uh, when when I was first uh, being introduced to the Let's Play community and and things like that, um, my I was trying to introduce my husband as well. And in order to do so, I'll admit I trolled him so hard. I was finding the worst Let's Plays I possibly could, and was showing them to him and and <laughs> saying, you know, hey, this is amazing. These are th this is the Let's Play community, and, and and this is what they do, and it's fantastic, and. I, I eventually broke down and, and started showing him good stuff. But for a while there, he was pretty convinced that every Let's Player in the world was absolutely horrible and had no quality. Uh, yeah, that's good. I'm, I'm a, quality. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of, of the long, long punchline. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, I control people in other aspects, but I think gaming, <laughs> I try to keep it so I actually tell people what games are good. Hmm. All right, well, I'll try and keep my trolling of, of our audience to a minimum. Uh, but uh, going back... I guess to, I'll, back I'll to... shout if you say anything's good and I don't agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Call me on my shit. Yep. Uh, but going back, uh, I want to... I, seriously, I want to give props out to the uh, to the Girl Scouts for for making this merit badge that, that pushes girls. It, and because it's... I, if you're not familiar with it, it is voluntary. Um, the Girl Scouts is not, you know, a government organization. Yeah, yeah. Everybody has to. 
uh, nor is it something like all the merit badges that go through. Um, they get a whole list of them, and for each of their little, uh, for each of their ranks that they go, that the girls go through, they get, uh, you know, choose three from this section and two from this section, and you get to pick and choose. But uh, I, I really, really want to give out props for them for saying, "Hey, look, we can make video games." Because let's let, let's admit, girls are women are very underrepresented in it in in video game companies as well. From from an from what I can see as an outsider. Yeah, well, usually the game development teams are usually like seventy to eighty percent are male and the rest are female. Right, as as and, and so. And so having having this program, and even if it doesn't end up getting off the ground, uh, it, it's still, I think it's a step in the right direction. Yeah, yep, I agree. So what was the um, badge for the Boy Scouts then? Uh, the Boy Scout badge was uh, the game, oh, which was it? Do, 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 do. Game Building Merit Badge, as I recall. Game building? Uh, game design? Which was it? Oh, so, okay. Sorry, I'm checking my notes here. If it's game design, well, then that's another political discussion coming, isn't it? <laughs> uh, it is It is game design. Uh, oh, it Jesus. requires Boy Scouts to design a game from scratch in their own notebooks. And then get the women to make it. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> See? Yeah. Well, that, uh, that should be integrated into both the I, I, Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts. I, I think it kind of is. They just uh, the the Girl Scouts is is focusing more on um, the the steps behind uh, the development process, whereas the Boy Scouts of Amer uh, the Boy Scouts merit badge is more designed on the minutia of game development. Mm -hmm. um, from the article I'm reading right now on it, uh, it looks like the Boy Scouts have to demonstrate an initial concept, multiple design iterations based on testing and feedback from blind testing, uh, and then they can prototype it and test it at Boy Scout functions. Mm -hmm. So, but they're also they're also working on a on merit badges for programming and animation. So. Hmm. Well, the the Girl they, Scout they could, one. They could, in theory, just learn a basic programming language. It's not, it's not that hard as long as you have the time to do it. Well, yeah. and it's as somebody pointed out to me yesterday or the day before. Uh, good programmers don't bother learning to program a language. They learn the under, you know, the the underlying principles of programming because after that it's just learning the syntax yeah well it, i just need to like me i just need to actually learn a a language so i can actually start doing that you need to have a language so you can actually do it well yes and yes and no i mean i it's if if you're looking for at it that route i would suggest python um, I, it, Python seems to be a pretty straightforward programming language where, from my limited experience with it, because I'm still teaching myself Python, uh, it, it's basically you can, the, the, there's very little true syntax specific things. Uh, it, it's more just the organization and it, and I think it's a great tool for being able to learn the underlying principles. Yeah, well, I was actually um, recommended C Sharp like maybe an hour ago or two. C Sharp's also a good one. Yeah, so there's also another programming language in for web design. There's PHP, HTML, and Perl. No, not Ruby. Perl. No, not Ruby. Uh. uh... I can't remember what it was called. He mentioned it, and I completely forgot. <laughs> <laughs> There's another one of those languages. I just don't remember what it was. ASP? Yeah, I think it was ASP. I don't know why he recommended ASP, though. Because uh, you can make good money being an ASP developer? Okay. Well, <laughs> I guess that's good. Well, he said it was actually easier to do. 
it, it might know. be. I don't I don't do a whole lot of work with ASP or ASP.NET, but um, no, I, I primarily focus on the Unix or Linux Unix side of things. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Well, so ASP yeah, we're we're too. we're giving people merit badges for for learning to build games and game development and design. Yep. So good on you guys. Yep. Good. Good job. Keep doing it. <laughs> um, then there was uh, there there was some news that was kind of bad, uh, and and saddening, but at the same time also gives hope for the future. Okay. Uh, are you familiar with the game Homeworld? I've heard of Homeworld. Yeah. Okay. So Homeworld was the the first. 3D RTS video game released in 1999 by Relic, hmm? and uh, it was a it was a fun, really fun game, uh, and and they kind of they they released some follow ups to it, some sequels, uh, some expansions, and and honestly, it was it was a blast. I really enjoyed it, and I was really saddened when uh, in 2004 Relic was purchased by THQ. Mm -hmm. uh, because THQ unfortunately tends to have uh, a habit of not releasing awesome things, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a random side note. I actually my 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 office at work is right next door to THQ's primary office. Mm -hmm. So THQ buys them for ten million dollars in cash, and they. Uh, and I'm assuming with that amount, with that money and, and some others that they had raised, uh, Relic actually managed to buy the rights of Homeworld back. So they were then owning the game, the, the, the rights to the game, and they were working for THQ. And then we didn't hear anything about it for ever in a day until, if you remember THQ being in the news most recently for, they were going bankrupt. Well, that wasn't too recently. That was back in December. Eh, well, that was only four months ago. To to me, anything within the last year is pretty recent. Five months ago, actually. But yeah, fair enough. Okay. But <laughs> uh, THQ was going bankrupt, and so they actually sold Relic Games to Sega in January of this year for about twenty-seven million dollars. So, so no one's going to less played ever. I'm sorry? So no one's going to let's play it ever. Because Sega has a tendency of, well, taking down let's plays. Well, see, here's here's the interesting thing. Sega didn't buy Homeworld. Sega bought Relic Studios. The IP, the, the intellectual property, the rights to Homeworld, was just sold in auction uh, by THQ to an unknown developer or publisher. Now, the reason that mm. I say this was sad was because there were some fans, some developers that were fans yeah. of the series that started up a Kickstarter campaign to try and raise money to put in a bid for the rights to the game. Yep. Uh, they were asking for about $50,000, and they ended up raising just over $60,000, and that was enough to give them uh, a qualified bidder status. And they got beaten out in like the first or second round. And nobody knows who currently owns the rights to it. So yeah. the Kickstarter campaign did a fantastic job. And then it failed. Be not through anything of their, their own doing. So the guys are, are refunding back all of their Kickstarter funds uh, that, that were there. And we are going to wait and see what, if anything, ever happens to Homeworld. <sighs> well, I'm hoping it'll, they'll release something because I've heard well, very good things about the game. I've got Homeworld 2 installed on one of my drives, I think. I just haven't gone around to playing it. Well, I, I would highly recommend it to you. Yeah, I've been recommended by several people to do it, but yeah... Finding the time, finding the time, and actually wanting to play it as well. Yeah, that that can always be a, a bit of a bother. Yeah. So, so what now? Uh, um, is is that an hour? Mm, it's fifty minutes. 
Eh, it's relatively close. So let, we'll, we'll just pad out with a little bit of a side conversation here. I was reading an article on uh, on a, one of the blogs that I follow, and their discussion topic was, is uh, social gaming on Facebook dying? And uh, they, they, they present some evidence for the fact that it is. You know, EA is pulling all of its most popular games off of Facebook, um super data the the track the tracking firm super data showed that social games uh reached a new low of only 124 million dollars in total revenue uh so it it it's kind of it, it looks like the social games on Facebook are on their way out okay do you, you i i assume you don't play any of those uh, I did like maybe two or three years ago. I tried some of them. Okay, so not not anything that would actually affect you. Um, I, I, I it it does kind of affect me in the fact that uh, my wife, my my dad, and my several friends do play those. I tend to not have time for it either. And when I do, I would much rather play a, a real game. Real game. Well, okay. Let me rephrase that. <laughs> I, I think that does them grave injustice because they are they are legit by any definition of the word they are games. Okay, let's just say a more developed game that's not for the mass media and not so simple. Uh I I don't think I could even go with that. Okay, so let's say a less of a a more in depth game. Uh, maybe I think we're starting to near it. I, I, I don't know how I would phrase it because I mean a lot of people put a lot of hard work into into games like that on on Facebook. I I know yeah, of some of them are good. Some of them are actually quite good. Actually, now that I think about it, I think I played one like a year ago. I think it was a Marvel game. That was actually quite interesting. See, and I I, I tend to go when it comes to social games. I tend to go with the smaller developers. There's a uh, there there's a game company. Uh, development company in Canada that I've done some work with, uh, Snakehead Games. They recently, uh, well, recently, within the last year or so, <laughs> uh, released a Facebook game that's basically um, you are training uh, uh, gladiators for the Roman gladiator games. Uh, and it's your typical social media type game. You know, you can buy things and upgrade and things of that nature. <laughs> But, uh, excuse me, my husband was sneezing in the background. Um, mm. But, uh, you know, I, I played that one for a little while, and I honestly, I just couldn't see, see myself spending that much time on Facebook personally. But I do know that there are a lot of people that do. And I, the developers, I know them, I've never met them face to face, but I've, I've actually done work for them, and, and I'm, I know who they are, and we're relatively good associates at this point, I, even though I haven't spoken to them in a while. And they put a lot of hard effort and, and work into that. So I, I don't feel comfortable just blowing off Facebook games as, you know, not real games. Mm -hmm. But, uh. They, of course, they're games, they're just. Not the types of games we like to play. Yeah. I, well, we do like to play them if we can, but we just don't have time for it. We want to play sort of games that have deeper mechanics. I okay, yes. That that one I can agree with. I uh, I'll, I'll give you that. That that's that that'll work for a definition for now. Good. Next episode, we define Facebook gaming in a way that, res that resonates with us. <laughs> Never. Uh, <laughs> so, well, we're coming close to the end, so let me just ask you, are you going to play any games, and what are they going to be for this week? Uh, well, I think I'm going to try to finish out Batman Arkham Asylum. I've got the DLC for it that I need to finish out. Um, I'm also thinking about going through uh, Castlevania on the 360, Lords of Shadows. Uh, I started it uh, about a year ago and got about a third of the way through it and never finished. And I really want to start over from the beginning and, and finish it out now. So that, okay. that's most likely what I'll be gaming over the week. Probably throw in some Fez, maybe throw in some Minecraft as well. 
but uh, that one's probably going to be my focus. Okay. So, How about uh, you? Yeah. The thing I'm probably going to play is Dota 2 and Cataclysm DDA. Uh, I was looking at a game on Steam here recently. It's called Eodor, but Masters of the Broken World. And to me it looks quite interesting, but I'm just weary about buying it because, well, I haven't really heard of the developer's Snowbird Games. Uh, I think they're Russian, maybe? Okay. Uh, but I'm just like waiting for reviews on it and all that, but maybe I'll be playing that within the week or something. We'll see. I may as well, I may also be playing some Civ 5 as well. Okay. So that's going to be fun. So we'll see. Oh, crud. I just noticed uh, GOG.com is having a Telltale Crazy sale right now. Uh, you can get six Telltale games uh, yeah, for I read about 30 that. bucks. Yeah. So yeah, if you want to go and get some neat little Telltale games like Monkey Island, Sam and Max, Back to, Back the, to the, future, the Future, and so on, Go over to GOG.com. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now we're not for people. shilling for these companies because we work for them or anything like that. No, 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 no. We don't. We don't. We really don't. If we were, we would have better production value. Woo! <laughs> and this opinion brought to you by Pepsi Max. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. So, yeah, All right, well, uh, this has been uh, another episode of Time to Live Podcast, and uh, I'm, I'm Rev. And I'm Quad, and thanks for watching. See you next week, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>